Hi, in this video, I'm going to be talking about blood transfusions, why you might need them, what to expect, and are they safe? It's not common that people going through breast cancer and its treatment will need a transfusion. There are a couple cases. The first would be somebody who has reconstructive surgery using tissue from another part of their body. This is a much more complicated procedure for the surgeon and there are many more incisions that are made. And I, it's not uncommon for me to see people who are mildly anemic when they have had um, reconstructive surgery using uh, another part of their body, like the abdomen or the muscle of the back. And it's also possible that some people start their surgery a little on the anemic side. So if your tank's a little low and then we lower it by putting you through a long distance drive uh, of the surgery, you may become anemic and you may be symptomatic from that. I'll get to symptoms in just a minute. Chemotherapy, as we covered in our video, side effects that might interfere with treatment, chemotherapy can, over time, lead to lowering of the red blood cells, and that's what makes us anemia, anemic. There are some regimens more likely than others to lead to lowering of the blood cell counts. For example, regimens where you get six doses or eight doses, we're going to see more anemia than if you're just getting four. To learn more about the chemotherapy options that might be part of your treatment plan, visit yerba.com. If you have symptoms, and if your red blood cell count is low enough, and symptoms include shortness of breath, especially with exertion, so you're climbing a set of stairs and you notice you're really winded, or you're walking on your daily walk and it's harder for you to go the same distance, or you run a short distance to uh, meet up with a friend and you're short of breath. That's the type of exertion I mean, and you're more short of breath. This may be a symptom associated with anemia. Another symptom could be chest pain. That's usually in people who have underlying heart disease. So the heart is being asked to do more with less. So it's our red blood cells that carry oxygen. If we have fewer red blood cells, it's harder for our heart to pump the blood to meet all the oxygen needs of all the tissues in the body. And that's especially the case if there's underlying heart disease. So you may be at greater risk for having symptoms from anemia, even if your red cell count is the same as somebody without heart disease, if that makes sense. Your physician will know whether or not you're at risk, but make sure to let them know about any personal or even family history of heart disease. It's uh, common that breast cancer is one of the risk factors is getting older. So even though you might be young, just so everybody knows that breast cancer is more common in older people who also have more uh, problems with other uh, organs in their body, like the heart. So if you're symptomatic and your red cell count is low, we might offer you a transfusion for a couple reasons. One, the first is so you feel better and have more energy. The second is so that we don't lower your count to such a level that it's not safe and you're at risk of having more problems, for example, with your heart. So when we offer you a transfusion, it's not a frivolous offer. It's not just for fun. It's not just to make you look pinker. Uh, it's really a health reason. And what I wanted to talk about now was the safety of our blood supply in the United States. Our blood supply in the United States is primarily from blood donors. You would like to ask your doctor if you're going to be given a transfusion, what is the source of your blood? What you want to do is make sure that you're getting blood from volunteer donors rather than paid donors. Paid donors have, and this is not 100%, but just think about this from a behavioral standpoint. If somebody is at the point where they need to give blood to pay the meals, they may not be as forthcoming when they answer all those questions about exposures to uh, risk factors for having a bloodborne infection like hepatitis. We screen all of our blood. Commercial labs screen all of their blood. Donor blood from 
people who are paid is screened. Nobody is giving blood that hasn't been screened for hepatitis and for HIV. Nonetheless, if the likelihood that somebody has an infection is higher, those false negatives become important. So I'm just gonna repeat what I said. Our screening is really good for our blood supply. Our blood supply is really safe. To make sure the blood you're being offered is the safest it can be, you would like to have your blood be from volunteer donors. Maybe you've been a volunteer blood donor and you know you do this out of the goodness of your heart, not for any other reason. You give up your time, your energy, and you, know, you have to drive someplace and wait because you care about other people. That's the donor supply you would like. I've covered a lot in this video and it's very unlikely that transfusion will be part of you know, the treatment plan of most people watching this video. Again, if you wanna learn more about the likelihood of your getting anemia from chemotherapy and surgery, you can visit yerba.com. And if this video has been helpful to you, even if it's just been interesting, you can just click like and subscribe and that helps other people with the same questions you have find the video. And as always, you can drop a comment or a question below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can.